Okay, double check ko lang po kung naka-live na tayo sa Facebook. Ayan, live na tayo sa Facebook. <laughs> Okay, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Pasensya na po sa mga nag-antay at uh, pumasok sa Zoom. Nagkaroon lang po ng konting technical difficulties. Pero ito, live na tayo. Meron na po tayong tatlong viewers so, sa sa Facebook Live. Antayin po natin umakit ng konti. Kasi for sure, uh, nagkalituhan lang po tayo sa oras. Pero makapag-start na po tayo ngayon. <laughs> so again, uh, belated Happy New Year po sa ating lahat. Welcome to the first episode ng Pantas, Environmental Research and the Local and global setup. So ito po yung unang episode natin for 2023 at hindi po Enero 28 ngayon. It's January 47, 2023 kasi sobrang daming nangyari tapos hindi pa tapos yung January natin. <laughs> Pero uh, we'll be working, uh, yung official program po natin will be four, from 4 to 5 p.m. Pero baka mag-extend tayo ng konti, mga 5.10 kasi late po tayo nag-start. Okay. So kailala lang po ulit ako. Ako si Kendrick. Uh, I'm the president and founder of the Philippine Association of Environmental Science Students, and I'm from the UPLB School of Environmental Science and Management, taking up environmental science, minor in development communication, specializing in science communication. And kilala lang po namin that kasi the second anniversary palang ang PAES this coming March 2023. Kami po yung samahan na mag-aaral ng agham pangkaligiran ng Pilipinas. We are the National Association of Organizations from both undergraduate and graduate levels of degree programs aligned, related, or equivalent to environmental science and environmental management. We also accept degree programs like environmental engineering, environmental planning, environmental biology, and more. So pag meron po kayong katunungan, message lang po kayo sa Facebook page namin or email us at membership.paes at gmail.com. So sa ngayon po, meron po kami universities la Ilocosur hanggang Zamboanga del Sur and we're proud to announce na ang Central Bicol State University of Agriculture the campus ay kakasali lang po uh, this January 2023 so shout out po sa mga new members namin from Camarines Sur so alam ko lang po ay Dios mabalos <laughs> so next time magpapaturo ako sa inyo ng Bicol and for the presentation outline naman po We'll have four parts. First is in baselining, so we'll still have a short baselining. Then opening remarks and the introduction of the resource speaker. And then the presentation of Sir Wesley and some Q&A. Then announcements and photo opportunity. So para po sa ating baselining, punta po ulit tayo sa menti.com sa mga subscribers, followers natin sa Facebook page. Alam nyo na po kung ano yung ginagawa natin sa menti.com. So punta lang po tayo sa menti.com and then type the code 8162. 2948 or you can just scan the QR code. Again, uh, type the code 8162-2948 or scan the QR code. So, lipat lang ako sa GET sa ating mentee. Ayan. Ano po ang nakikita natin sa screen? Double check, double check. Ayon sa ating Facebook. Kita na yung menti? Hindi pa kita yung menti. Kita na? Kita na ba? <laughs> I will assume na kita na yung menti.com. <laughs> Pero, yun yan, stop share tayo. Naglalag ang Facebook. Share screen. Ayan, lumabas na. So, ang unang question po natin, again, sa mga hindi pa nakakapag-type ng code, type the code, 8162-2948. So, ang unang tanong natin is nasa ang probinsya ka ngayon? So, ako as always, it's either Laguna or Metro Manila. Sige, bigyan natin sila ng time lumipat konti sa menti.com. <laughs> Feel ko kakagaling nyo lang sa final week, kaya ano, <laughs> hindi, ka pa, hindi pa kayo makalipat ng tab. Again, ay sorry menti.com kaya menti.com na go to menti.com and use the code 816 ayan tarlac dapat representative ang tarlac kasi doon nang galing yung resource speaker natin <laughs> okay other provinces may nakita akong pampanga kanina eh, sa original zoom natin yung mga nasa facebook po natin pwede po kayo mag comment kung, ano, kung nasang probinsya kayo nababasa po namin yan
Pwede po kayo, eh, hindi ko ako paano yung may send daw stars, pero wag na kayo mag-send ng stars. <laughs> Ayan, Pampanga. Okay. Yung sa Vismin natin, may nakapunta ba from Vismin? Visayas, Mindanao, Bicol State, ay Bicol State, sorry. CBSUA, <laughs> NCR. Ayan, yung mga TUP natin, maraming nag-register from TUP Manila. Tarlac. Di ba? Sir Wesley, sana proud ka na <laughs> Tarlac yan dito. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Mga students. <laughs> Nag-guard kayo sa ano. Pag hindi kayo nag, ano, wala kayo attendance bukas. <laughs> okay, sige. Uh, right now, we have 24 sa... Siguro mga dalawa pang sumagot from Zoom. Pero di po yung sa mga Facebook Live natin. Promise. Pwede po kayo sumagot or mag-comment. Ayan, may Cavite State na. Cavite, North Cotabato. Si ano to? University of Southern Mindanao. Sige, sige. Okay, thank you so much sa mga nag-answer sa first question natin. And for our second question, okay, mag-next. Next. Ayan, mag-guy na isang native endemic species sa inyong lugar. Yung common name lang para mas madaling itype. Mag-guy na isang native o endemic species sa inyong lugar. For Los Banos, Meron kaming Rafflesia at yung Jade Vine. Either animal or plant okay lang din. Wala namang grade yung ano, yung tanaw, yung, yung, yung question. Siguro sa Tarlac, ay hindi ko alam pag Tarlac eh. Wala kang Philippine Eagle eh. <laughs> Hala yung mga students Sir Wesley, kailangan po sa mag Kahit sa Philippines, kahit not, not necessarily in your region. Philippine Eagle counted po yun. Sige, type nyo na yung Philippine Eagle. <laughs> Tsaka yung tama raw. Yung... Hindi yung tilapia eh. Ano yung... Bangos pala yung national fish natin. Ayan, from Mindanao, Iligan. Hello po. Oy, sana invite sa'yo po kayo. Binanao State University Iligan Institute of Technology. Sige, ano pong ano? Anong native species sa Iligan? Sa Iligan? Parang lanaw ata ang ano, di ba? Iligan. Nahihirapan po ba kayo sa menti.com? Pwede niyo po i-chat sa Zoom. Ayan, ay cane toad. Hindi <laughs> ko siya mabasa lang mali. <laughs> Nakakaya. Cane toad. Sige. Sampagita. Kala ko po kasi scientific na yung cane toad. Lagi na space sa gitna. <laughs> okay, sige. Last one, last one. Some, an, Arayat Pitogo. Wait lang, i-google natin kung ano yung Arayat Pitogo. Na-curious ako. Ang Arayat Pitogo ay isang... Ano ba ito? Bayit or sawang? Basta parang fern. Okay, fern si Araya at Pitogo. Okay, sige. Thank you so much po sa mga samagot. At least meron tayong bagong learning yan. Si Araya at Pitogo ay isang palm tree. Okay, so balik tayo sa ating presentation. For opening remarks, ito pa yung ginagawa din ever since nag-start yung Fantastic. Pero nagdagdag po tayo ng equation. So merong, medyo may konting math. Pero hindi ko sure kung tama yung equation natin. So may nagtanong po kasi din sa registrants natin kung bakit sobrang lawak daw na NPSI or na environmental science. Kasi right now, yung types of ecosystem natin, we have at least seven. And hindi naman lahat yun nasa Pilipinas. Pero yung components kasi, we have at least five. So yun yung minimum, lima yun. So kung multiply natin si E at si C at erase natin, kasi di ba kailangan i ano yun? Parang sa stat, nire-raise siya para ma-multiply ng tama. Ganon kalawak yung, yung topic sa end by side. So for example, ako, sabi ko sa inyo, environmental communication yung uh, minor ko. So medyo nasa social ako. Si Sir Wesley, mamaya papakilala natin, pero more on biological yung uh, background niya, based dun sa CV. Pero let's see dun sa, ano niya, sa research niya. Meron ulit tayong bagong nag-comment sa Facebook. Si President Windward from Mindanao State University Sindangan Campus. And so, 
as mentioned kanina, we have started as last 2022 and kung pumunta po kayo sa Facebook page ng PAES, adun po lahat ng uh, videos natin. Pwede siyang i-rewatch anytime. And kaya po tayo nagka-Facebook Live kasi nga, para dun sa mga hindi makakapasok sa Zoom, pwede nyo pa rin panoorin kahit pa paano. So we started this January 2022 last year. So ngayon naka-isang taon na po tayo. We have eight episodes of Pantas and then we have one, yung Punla, which is yung career talk ng PAES. And for Sir Wesley, siya yung ninth speaker natin for Panta. And to introduce him, uh, Mr. Wesley S. Gagarin graduated BS Biology in Central Luzon State University and then he took his Master's in the UP Masters of Environmental Science in the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Sinubukan po talaga namin kumuha ng hindi graduate ng UPLB. Kaya lang nagkakataon na puro UPLB po yung gumagraduate sa atin for Master's. And then he, he was the chairperson of the Department of Environmental Science from Tarlac State University and the faculty advisor of Tarlac State University Environmental Science Society. So, Sir Wesley, you can take the floor na po. Okay, so thank you, Sir Kendrick. Um, ask ko lang, ma naririnig niyo po yung aking audio? Is it, am I audible? No? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sige. Okay, so thank you very much, Sir Kendrick. So let me share my uh, presentation for this afternoon. So, okay. So, nakikita niyo po yung aking presentation. Is it visible in your screen? Yes po. May logo na. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. Ayan. So, okay. Uh, again, um, good afternoon to everyone, especially to uh, all the environmental uh, professionals and uh, students who are with us uh, this afternoon. Isang makakalikasang hapon po sa ating lahat. A pleasant afternoon to everyone and um, again I am Wesley Gagarin and I am a faculty member of the Department of Environmental Science here in uh, Tarlac State University. So I am uh, very grateful to PAES or the Philippine Association of Environmental Science students for uh, inviting me to share my insights and ideas about um, uh, about environmental research in the local sector. So the title of my talk uh, for this uh, webinar is uh, Environmental Research in Tarlac Province. So uh, why I, I want to focus on Tarlac uh, Province because uh, I, I am working here. I was a native of uh, Tarlac and uh, I, I am also aware about the environmental issues uh, in our province. Okay? So, uh, this is the outline of my uh, presentation this afternoon. So for the first part of my talk, uh, I will present a brief profile of Tarlac Province para uh, we are in the same context. Alam natin yung pinag-uusapan natin. And uh, uh, some of you, I, I, I see kanina na uh, madaming mga taga-ibang lugar like in Cavite, NCR, and uh, North uh, Cotabato. So, uh, it's my opportunity to uh, introduce to you the Tarlac uh, province, no? like uh, where it is located, uh, what is its topography, so on and so on. And uh, after that, I will discuss uh, some of the major environmental issues in Tarlac province. Uh, I will also uh, discuss the current environmental researches here in our province based on the published research articles available in uh, Google Scholar, LiveGen, and Web of Science. And uh, the last part of my talk, uh, I will uh, present to you some of the uh, prospects of environmental researches in uh, Tarlac province. Okay? So let us start with um, a brief profile of uh, Tarlac province, particularly where it is located. As you can see in the map, uh, Tarlac is a landlocked province in Central Luzon. So wala po kami mga marine resources. So puro uh, aquatic and uh, terrestrial resources. And um, kung makikita natin sa mapa, Tarlac province is uh, bounded by the province of, uh, in the south, by the province of Pampanga. In the east, it is bounded by the province of Nueva Ecija. In the north, uh, it is bounded by the province of Pangasinan, and in the west part, it is bounded uh, by uh, Sambales province. So uh, in terms of the topography 
of uh, Tarlac province. So the eastern section of the province is uh, considered as plain or relatively flat land. So medyo patag po yung eastern section ng Tarlac. While the western section of the Tarlac is uh, hilly and mountainous. So the highest peak in the province is Mount Iba, which is located in San Jose Tarlac with an elevation of 1,655 meters. So aside from mountains or aside from uh, forest resources, Tarlac province is also blessed with lakes, rivers, streams, and creeks. So the longest river in the province is uh, Tarlac River with, uh, with a length of uh, 95.2 kilometers. So bakit ba napakaraming mga rivers, streams, and uh, lakes ng Tarlac? Because the primary reason there is because Tarlac is part of uh, two major watersheds in, cent in central Luzon, the Agno River Basin and the Pampanga River Basin. So in addition to that, uh, the total land area of uh, Tarlac province is uh, estimated to be at 2,736 uh, square kilometers. Uh, according to the 2020 census, the total population of the province is 1.5 million and it is projected to increase in the coming years. Tarlac province is composed of one city, uh, the Tarlac city, which is also the capital of the province. So uh, the Tar Tarlac province has 17 municipalities and a total of 511 barangays. Um, the economy of uh, Tarlac province is mainly agriculture, uh, agriculture based and um, rice and uh, sugar cane are the uh, primary crops no, or the principal crops in the province. Now, uh, let's talk about the environmental uh, problems or challenges in Tarlac province. So similar with other emerging provinces in the province, Tarlac is also uh, facing various environmental concerns. First is the problem on solid waste. So problema din po namin sa Tarlac ang solid waste. So uh, the lack of segregation of waste at source remains a primordial challenge on solid waste management in the province. Because of the lack of seg segregation at the household level, uh, tons of waste are still dumped no, in major landfills of Tarlac every day. And uh, another environmental concern in Tarlac City, is, in, or in Tarlac province, I should say, is the decreasing water quality of streams and creeks. Uh, because of uh, improper waste disposals, uh, industrial intensifications and agricultural activities, various streams and creeks in the province are uh, slowly degraded. Uh, the picture in the right side, no, or uh, in the right side of the slide, uh, depicts uh, the Masalasa Creek, no, one of the tributaries of Tarlac River. Uh, before, Masalasa Creek has a good water quality, but because of nutrient loading and uh, indecent waste disposals, uh, some parts of the creek are now covered with plastic waste and aquatic microbiome. So um, because of this, a lot of rehabilitation efforts are uh, being imposed or are being implemented in the Masalasa Creek. And then um, flooding is also a common problem in the province, uh, particularly in the low-lying municipalities of Tarlac, namely Kamiling, the municipality of Kamiling, uh, Ramos, La Paz, Pura, and even Tarlac City. So the main source of flooding is due to overflowing of rivers and streams during uh, prolonged uh, rainy seasons, during um, southwest monsoons, and uh, during uh, typhoons. No? So the picture in uh, the image in the left side depicts a flooding event in Kamiling Tarlac uh, that happened last uh, July 2018. So nangyari po yung pagbaha na yan because the Kamiling River uh, nag-overflow po siya. So aside from flooding, uh, landslide is also a problem in the province. You know? um, according to the assessment of the Mines uh, and Geosciences Bureau, the province is susceptible to landslide, particularly in the mountainous parts of the municipality of San Clemente, San Jose, Capas, and uh, Bambay. 
So another environmental issue in Tarlac province is uh, deforestation. So uh, the forest resources of Tarlac province is under the pressure of deforestation. So according to the Global Forest Watch, you know, the Tarlac province has lost more than 4.65 kilo hectares of tree cover from 2001 to 2021. So imagine uh, decreasing the new uh, forest resources of Tarlac. And, uh, the, and the main driver that was identified in the report was forest fire. Uh, so uh, yung pagkasunog ng bundok sa parts ng Tarlac is the main driver of, of deforestation according to the report of Global Forest Watch. Okay? And then now uh, let's move on to the uh, current trends of environmental research in Tarlac province. As you can see in the figure, medyo... Uh, yung environmental threat, um, yung current environmental uh, research trends at Tarlac province covered, covers a wide array of environmental issues. So based on the review that I conducted, there are a total of 19 published uh, environmental researches from 2012 to 2022 that centers on the uh, environmental aspects of Tarlac. So we can see here the breakdown. Uh, we can see here the breakdown for research team. So according to the figure, 27% of the published researches are uh, focusing on climate change mitigation and adaptation, uh, especially on uh, the climate resilient uh, agricultural practices of uh, local farmers in Tarla. Moreover, kung titignan natin yung uh, figure, 26% uh, of the published uh, envi-related researches in the province of Tarlac are focused on uh, water quality assessment and management, particularly on the physical, chemical, and bacteriological analysis of streams, creeks, irrigation sources, and drinking water. Uh, there are also published researches uh, focusing on groundwater modeling in the municipalities of Concepcion and Santa Ignacia Tarlac. So, uh, marami pong researches about the creeks, about the water quality of rivers, streams, and creeks dito sa Tarlac province. Furthermore, 16% uh, of the published researches covers flood hazard assessment of various areas in the province. So uh, may mga research, may mga published researches po uh, that talks about or that deals with the uh, flood hazard mapping of various areas in Tarlac, particularly in Tarlac uh, City. Uh, there are also few published researches on the area of uh, disaster risk reduction and management, valuation of natural resources, biodiversity assessment, forest resources, and environmental education among Tarlacanian students. So based from the data, we can infer that most of the published researches are covering uh, environmental problems that are currently experiencing uh, by the Tarlac province, no? except on the area of solid waste management landslide and deforestation. So kulang pa po tayo ng mga researches when it comes to solid waste management, landslide mitigation, and as well as deforestation. Okay? So the, our department, no, the Department of Environmental Science of uh, Tarlac State University is uh, committed to produce relevant researches uh, that would address various environmental challenges in the province. Uh, at our department, we have a functional research agenda which guides the uh, researches that we undertake in the department. So our research agenda is uh, can be summarized into an acronym called EARTH. So parang pang -envisay, pa, para pang envisay talaga siya. So the EARTH uh, research agenda has uh, is composed of five research team or research programs. So the E is for ecological solid waste management researches. So anything to do with uh, researches on uh, proper waste segregation, um, waste disposal, uh, waste analysis and characterization studies. So dito po pumapasok sa uh, ecological solid waste management program. Um, in addition to that, we also have a program for 
researches focuses focusing on ambient environmental conditions monitoring. So dito po pumapasok yung mga researches on water quality, air quality, soil analysis, and a uh, lot more. And then we also have uh, the R, which stands for Responsive Environmental Education for Sustainability. So dito naman po pumapasok yung mga researches uh, that, uh, that uh, centers on the assessment knowledge attitude practices of students and households uh, when it comes to environmental health, climate change, global warming, so on and so forth. And then we also have T, which is uh, focusing on technological innovations in energy. So in our department, uh, yung promote po talaga namin is renewable energy. So we have a lot of uh, researches when it comes to the utilization of uh, solar energy in agriculture and in transportation sectors. We also have the H, which is um, for researches that focuses on ecosystem health and biodiversity conservation studies. So uh, researches like uh, biodiversity assessment, evaluation of natural resources, um, land use, uh, land cover change analysis. So dito po pumapasok sa program na healthy ecosystem and biodiversity conservation studies. Okay. So... Uh, for the past four years, no, from 19, 2019 to 2022, the Department of uh, Environmental Science, uh, in, which, in, which also includes student researchers, have produced a total of 28 completed researches. So among uh, these 28 completed researches, uh, 11 are under the ecosystem and biodiversity conservation research. So we have researches on uh, biodiversity assessment, in the ancestral domains of uh, indigenous people in Hapas. We also have researches on the Afrifauna diversity and valuation studies on local wetlands in uh, Tarlac province. So aside from uh, researches focusing on uh, healthy ecosystem and biodiversity conservation studies, we also have completed uh, researches on ambient environmental conditions in which majority are on the assessment of water quality of rivers, streams, and creeks in the province. We also have six researches on a responsive environmental education. So mostly these are researches uh, on the assessment of the cap of students on environmental health and the integration of environmental education to academic curriculum. And under the technological innovations in the energy sector, we have three completed researches um, focusing on the utilization of solar energy in agricultural uh, in, in the ag agricultural sector and uh, transportation sectors. Lastly, we have two uh, completed researches that uh, covers the solid waste management programs and uh, challenges in the municipality of Victoria. So this is the current trends of environmental researches that we are uh, conducting in the Department of Environmental Science in PSU. So um, it also covers a wide array of environmental topics such as uh, renewable energy, biodiversity conservation, uh, environmental education, um, environmental monitoring, and solid waste management. So um, now uh, let me present uh, to you some of the ongoing researches of our department. Um, so the first one is uh, a TSU funded research uh, entitled An Environmental Impact Assessment of the TSU Lagoon and its Potential for Native Freshwater uh, Fish Propagation and Avifauna Diversity Conservation. Because, uh, last 2020, uh, we have a newly constructed artificial wetland inside campus, no? inside the uh, TSU Villa Lucinda Extension Campus. So we are conducting uh, this study in order to assess the impacts of uh, the artificial wetland to the uh, overall environmental conditions of the university. Uh, the study also aims to determine the potential of the artificial lagoon for uh, native uh, freshwater and avifaunal diversity conservation. 
So as of now, po, majority of our research materials were already procured and we are now collecting data for our uh, study. Okay. And then we also have a collaborative research with, an in, with uh, a university in Netherlands, the Wageningen University and Research. So the title of our research is uh, Three Decadal Changes in the Agricultural Lands of Tarlac City. So uh, for the information of everyone, so Tarlac, uh, the uh, agricultural uh, lands of uh, Tarlac are slowly uh, con being converted to other land uses like residential areas, commercial areas, uh, and other type of uh, land use. And uh, this is, in this study, we want to quantify the changes uh, in the agricultural lands of Tarlac City from uh, 1998 to 20, 2018 using uh, technologies such as GIS, remote sensing, and artificial neural network. So this study also aimed to determine the drivers of agricultural land conversion in Tarlac City. So ano ba yung mga factors that contributes to the uh, land conversion of agricultural lands in the city. And we believe that um, after the completion of this study, uh, the result of the study can be utilized by the local government unit of Tarlac City towards the sustainable um, agricultural resource allocation, utilization, and conservation of the remaining agricultural lands of the city. Okay. And then... Um, we also have an, an, an ongoing project with uh, the Department of Agriculture with a budget of 4.2 million. So one of our faculty members has uh, developed an innovative uh, integrated solar power generation for irrigation purposes. So uh, na established na na yon, and this time we want to conduct a region-based technology demonstration and commercialization of uh, the developed technology. We want to test it uh, to various agricultural fields in Central Luzon, whether the technology is worthy or not. So yun yung, yun yung isa sa aming mga ongoing researches in the department. We also have a study on the uh, blood vulnerability and uh, community adaptation strategies. And we want to uh, apply it in the municipality of uh, Ramos Tarlac. So Ramos is a municipality in Tarlac that is frequently flooded. So the goal of our uh, research is to measure the uh, physical, uh, environmental, social, and economic flood vulnerability indices of the different barangays of Ramos Tarlac. We also want to assess uh, their coping strategies, the coping strategies of households in Ramos uh, in terms of Okay, so uh, this research is uh, funded by TSU with a budget of 161,850. So you can also do this in your municipalities, especially uh, for municipalities that are highly susceptible to planning. And then we also have a, an ongoing project on, we have a collaborative research project with the uh, National Commission uh, on indigenous people or the NCIP Tarla. So the title of the project is uh, Climate Change and Health Risk, uh, Barriers, Perspective, and Adaptive Practices of Indigenous People in Tarla. So the study aims to assess the coping strategies and practices of indigenous people against climate change and its corresponding health risks. So gusto namin malaman yung mga uh, adaptive strategies or coping strategies as well as practices of the indigenous people when it comes to climate change and health risks. Uh, we also want to determine the factors or barriers encountered by indigenous people in complying or participating in climate change programs of our government. So our target population are IP household in Tarlac province. So uh, province uh, province-wide yung kanyang scope, uh, data will be collected uh, using focus group discussions, interviews, and uh, direct observation. So I forgot to mention that uh, we need this type of study, especially here in Tarlac, because uh, Tarlac is uh, known, uh, is a home no, 
for uh, various tribes of indigenous people, particularly yung mga high test natin. So we want um, conducting this um, type of research will uh, help them cope no, with the impacts of uh, climate change. And then now let us uh, proceed. Uh, now let me present to you some of the environmental research prospects in Tarlac province. So when we say research prospects, uh, these are the potential uh, environmental research areas that you can conduct in Tarlac province. So uh, yung mga students natin, uh, yung mga participants natin, especially yung mga students natin, pwede kayong kumuha ng, uh, ng ideas no, kung ano yung mga pwede yung i-research dito sa Tarlac province as, uh, as your thesis or as your thesis type. So, uh, ano nga ba yung mga research prospects sa environment sa Tarlac province? So the first is uh, studies on um, ecotourism. Uh, the first research prospect is on uh, ecotourism studies. So Tarlac province is now gaining uh, popularity to both local and uh, foreign tourists for its eco-friendly tourist destination. And also uh, the provincial government of Tarlac wants to promote uh, ecotourism in Tarlac province. So, isa yan sa mga priority programs ng uh, Tarlac provincial government to promote sustainable tourism here in the province. Some of the well-known uh, tourist sites in the province uh, includes uh, Sitio Baag in San Jose Tarlac, uh, Canding Falls in San Clemente Tarlac, and Tambu Lake in Capas Tarlac. Uh, however, no, uh, there are few research or there are few studies that are conducted that, that are conducted to assess the environmental and social aspects of these tourism sites. Although to matanggap na sila ng tourists uh, dito sa mga ecotourism sites na to, but uh, the problem is hindi natin alam yung mga environmental uh, and economic resources na nandun sa area uh, sa area or sa tourism sites na yun. And uh, with that, uh, researches are needed uh, in the following areas. So the first one is on the assessment of the carrying capacity of this ecotourism site. So kailangan natin malaman yung carrying capacity ng uh, mga tourism uh, sites na ito nang sa ganun, hindi nat, hindi ma, uh, kahit na may tourism activities, hindi siya ganun masisira or conserve and well-managed pa rin itong mga tourist sites na ito. So uh, carrying capacity studies are very much needed in this uh, ecotourism sites. Aside from carrying capacity studies, we also need to conduct baseline studies uh, in, in terms of the uh, flora and fauna present in these uh, tourist sites. Uh, in addition, initial studies on water quality, air quality, and soil quality are also needed so in order for us to establish the environmental conditions of this uh, site. So we want to assess the baseline condition of uh, these tourist sites. Nang sa ganun, kung meron bang project, meron bang uh, structures na itatayo doon, alam natin, na, alam natin yung baseline at masasabi natin na may impact yung uh, interventions na yun by comparing it to the baseline uh, data that we uh, gather uh, on this uh, tourism site. So baseline studies on biodiversity, water quality, air quality, and soil quality are needed in this uh, tourist sites or ecotourism sites. Okay, and then um, aside from that, no, so sorry, na forgot ko yung um, animation. So una nga kanina na mention ko yung carrying uh, studies on the carrying capacity of ecotourism sites. Uh, baseline studies on biodiversity, water quality, air quality, and soil quality. And uh, pwede din tayong mag-conduct ng mga valuation studies on ecotourism sites. So we can uh, also apply environmental valuation uh, methods to determine the recreational and non-use values of these uh, ecotourism sites. So such assessments are necessary in order to determine the total environmental and economic value of this uh, ecotourism sites. So um, valuation methods like travel cost method, contingent valuation method can be applied in this, can be applied in this uh, tourist sites. Okay. So another, uh, one of the research priority 
areas in Tarlac province is Tacanaran Lake. I don't know if you are familiar with this uh, lake, no? uh, but for uh, residents of Tarlac, siguro familiar sila, but with other uh, uh, participants from other schools or from other provinces, siguro ngayon lang nila narinig itong Tacanaran Lake. So, uh, Tacanaran Lake is uh, 104 hectare uh, wetland located in uh, Victoria, Tarlac. The Canarium Lake serves as a habitat and stopover of avifaunal or bird species during the migration season. It is considered by the DENR as one of the most important wetlands in uh, Luzon. So our department, no, uh, Interlac State University, have conducted a few studies on Canarium Lake so far, but uh, future researches are very much needed no, particularly in the following areas. So the first one is uh, on the uh, biodiversity assessment uh, of the wetland, particularly with emphasis on the bird species present in the wetland. So kailangan aralin yung mga uh, biodiversity na nasa Canaram Lake, uh, particularly yung mga bird species na present doon. And then... Uh, Second is on the water quality assessment of the Panarum Lake. So far, wala pang uh, nagkakandak ng water quality analysis doon. And uh, this type of studies are uh, necessary since the wetland or the Panarum Lake are surrounded by agricultural areas. And there are also uh, figures in the vicinity of the wetland. So it's very critical for us to conduct water quality analysis in Panarum Lake. So uh, also uh, studies focusing on the, of course, uh, focusing on the lake carrying capacity should be conducted um, because right now, uh, Kandaram Lake is uh, accepting tourists, na, local tourists, and um, there are also uh, people who are going there, uh, particularly for bird watching activities. And uh, one of the goal of the LGU is to make Kandaram Lake an ecotourism site or they want to promote a sustainable tourism in Canaran Lake. So in order to do that, we, also, we, we need to determine the carrying capacity of the lake. So ilang tao lang pa yung kaya niyang i-cater, uh, ilang tourists lang yung kaya niyang i-cater, so things like that. So it is very important for uh, the lake's uh, sustainable management. Okay, so also uh, researches on the perceptions of local communities on the ecosystem of uh, Canaram Lake uh, are also needed no, as an input for the sustainable management of the Canaram Lake. So Canaram Lake kasi is surrounded by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, three to four barangays. No? So um, assessing their uh, perception on the, local, on the ecosystem services of Canaram Lake uh, will be a vital input for the management and conservation efforts in Canaram Lake. Okay, so um, Atarlac province is not only rich on no, aquatic resources, but also with uh, forest resources. In fact, uh, Tarlac is endowed with uh, 120,370 hectares of forest lands. Uh, however, there are a few studies on the, on the forest resources of Tarlac. So nakita nyo naman kanina doon sa current trends ng environmental research sa Tarlac province, kukunti lang no, yung nagpo-focus uh, sa forest resources ng uh, Tarlac province. Pero in reality, napaka-rich ng Tarlac, Pro Tarlac province when it comes to forest resources. And uh, when we conducted an extension activity in the IP community in San Jose, Tarlac, we are very surprised that the uh, locals uh, are mentioning about the endemic fauna uh, that are present in their ancestral domain. Hence, we think that uh, biodiversity assessment focusing on flora, fauna, and microbiota are, uh, are very timely studies. No? Uh, because uh, by doing this type of uh, researches or studies, we can quantify uh, and determine the floral and faunal compositions of the forest ecosystem in the uh, province. So biodiversity assessment or biodiversity studies are uh, needed 
uh, in Tarlac province, particularly to assess the flora and fauna of uh, the forest resources of the province. Okay, so um, as I mentioned a while ago, you know, so uh, the uh, forest resources of uh, Tarlac province is also under the pressure of deforestation. So researches regarding the patterns and drivers of deforestation in Tarlac province are also needed no? uh, so that uh, reforestation projects can be uh, strategically imposed. So dapat uh, makita natin kung saan uh, nagkakaroon ng reforestation so that all the rehabilitation or the restoration projects or initiatives of uh, the government can be strategically imposed to these uh, sites. Um, also, in addition to that, no, uh, studies on the uh, indigenous knowledge uh, and practices of IPs on forest and biodiversity can also be conducted to strengthen the environmental protection and conservation programs of the province. So, kung gusto nating pangalagaan yung uh, forest resources ng province, we need to uh, partner with indigenous peoples kasi sila yung mga nakatero doon. So assessing their roles, their knowledge and practices uh, when it comes to forest conservation and biodiversity conservation are vital inputs in order to protect the natural resources in the province. Okay? Uh, so lastly, we can also conduct uh, urban-related studies in uh, Tarlac City. So Tarlac City is a fast-growing uh, city in Central Luzon. So the, uh, when, and in addition to that, the population of the city is also increasing because of uh, rural to urban migration. So the rapid urbanization of the city have resulted to various environmental challenges. Researches can be conducted to cover the following areas. Uh, first is on the analysis of urban sprawl in Tarlac City. So um, we can do this type of research by applying uh, GIS and remote sensing technologies. So studies like this is uh, very important for decision makers to properly manage the remaining land resources of the city. So studies on the uh, spatial inventory and uh, protection of urban green spaces in Tarlac City are also needed considering the increasing densities of establishments and uh, the intense warming of the city during summer. So kailangan natin makita kung dumadami pa yung urban green spaces or kumukonti yung mga urban green spaces natin sa Tarlac City. Nang sa ganun, appropriate intervention can be done or can be implemented. And uh, we, um, we can also conduct um, air pollution studies no, in, in Tarlac. These are very timely research in, in Tarlac City since there are increasing number of uh, industries and vehicles in the city. So um, conducting air pollution studies, especially in the central business districts of Tarlac City is very uh, important in order to promote uh, or in order to uh, protect no, uh, the health of the, the public in Tarlac City. So um, what I have presented are just some no, of the potential research areas that can be conducted in Tarlac Rapid. So, napakadaming natural resources ng Tarlac. Uh, hence, napakarami din pwedeng gawin mga studies about these natural resources. Um, as students and uh, faculty uh, members from other state universities and colleges are highly encouraged no, to conduct uh, environmental researches in Tarlac province. And uh, our department, the Department of Environmental Science, are very much open to collaborative research. Kasi yun na yung uso ngayon. So no, no man is an island, sabi nila. So uh, we are, here in our department, we are promoting collaborative researches with uh, other uh, SOAPs, uh, other government agencies, and so on. So if you are interested, you can uh, contact us through this uh, through this uh, information. So by the way, uh, the Department of Environmental Science in TSU is located at the TSU Lucinda Extension Campus at the Barangay Maliwalo, Tarlac City. So you can 
uh, contact us through this uh, landline or email us. If you are interested to conduct research here in Tarlac province, so you can email us at causelessfaculty at gmail.com. Okay, so I think that's the end of my presentation this afternoon. I hope I you gain uh, something uh, from this, uh, from my talk, especially uh, the possible research areas in our province in Tarlac province. Okay, so that's all. For, thank you very much, uh, Sir Kendrick and uh, to all our participants. Thank you for uh, listening to Okay, thank you so much, Sir Wesley. So, bag, para, bago tayo magpunta sa Q&A, uh, bigyan muna kita ng time para huminga and yung mga okay, students mag-isip mag ng question. Okay, sir. Sige. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mag-shoutout din po pala muna ako dun sa mga participants natin sa Facebook. Kasi, sir, di ba kanina sinabi natin kotobato pa lang. Pero right yes. now, we have... Uh, students, environmental science students from University of Southern Tagal, ay Southern Philippines, USTP. Okay, sure. University of Science and Technology of, hindi ba sa USTP CDO? So, kagayang De Oro, umabot na po tayong CDO. Oh, and then, so meron din po tayo sa Marawi City, may MSC po sa Marawi, USM in Kabakan, as sila sa Katabato. Then, University of Mindanao in Davao. Tapos, Davao City, yes, MSC Marawi. So, majority of our Students ngayon ay parang nasa Mindanao and then Tarlac State, syempre. Okay, sige. Thank you, sir. So, napaka-dami okay. pala nating attendees, sir, no? And, yes, yes. Uh, covers wide geographic. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, super. Ano po talaga, buong Pilipinas. Pero, sir, request ko lang po na stop share po muna tayo. Okay, sir. Sige. Okay, okay. sige po. Para makita po kayo ng mga students natin. <laughs> sige, sir. Ipipin po natin kayo. Pin. Then, wait lang. Yes, sir. Okay. Welcome so, guys sa Lagoon. Yes, sir. Sige. Yes, punta po talaga ako sa Lagoon kasi nakikita ko po dun sa mga students yung nagpo-post sila ng stories. Tapos parang kayo lang, isa kayo dun sa nakita ko na may sariling Lagoon sa loob ng campus. Yes, like, sir. Like sobrang galing. <laughs> okay. That is Tapos, originally sige. for, ano, sir, for climate change mitigation kasi, uh, and adaptation. Kasi yung uh, Lucinda Campus dito sa uh, Arla, uh, yung campus namin dito medyo bahain siya at di Uh, mm -hmm. at that part so ang ginawa ginawa siya ginawa catch basin oh, catch basin nice tapos <laughs> nagkaroon pa ng libreng parks ang students yes sir okay sige sir uh, for me I have para, marami po ako ng sulat pero konti lang syempre yung sasabihin ko kasi maraming students ang magtatanong so yung mga students po sa Zoom tsaka sa Facebook Live pwede po kayong mag-type ng question or pwede kayong mag-raise hand sa Zoom tapos tatawagin ko kayo so yung una po is I think super importante po yung ginawa yung uh, yung eight research teams saka yung five research agenda para po hong nakinig sa ano sa introduction to thesis writing or searching for thesis topic kasi na narrow down na po natin yung ano eh yung pede yung kakayanin dun sa geographic location na meron sila tapos nag-highlight din po kayo per uh, environment impossible kwa ecotourism meron kayong five bullet points na may thesis title na talaga depende na lang sa student kung paano nila gagawin yun So, sir, ito po yung mga Tarlac students na naging Prof. Sir Wesley. Uh, kunin nyo siya advice. Kunin nyo siya advice. <laughs> kunin nyo advice. Then, yes, sir. Number three, kasi po ako social component talaga yung thesis ko. Yes, And sir. nakita ko yung contingent valuation. Akala ko nung una, umiiwas talaga ako sa math, kaya ako nag-social component. <laughs> Pero apparently, kailangan ko kasi ng contingent valuation para sa thesis ko. Kaya sana yung mga students natin, huwag nating isarado sa isang component lang yung ating gagawin. Kasi, yun nga, sobrang daming possibilities. Pwede magkaroon ng isang ng bio, biological study tsaka physical study sa isang thesis. So, sana i-entertain nyo yung mga ganong thoughts. Then, number four, thank you po for ano, highlighting si, ano, si MGB, Minds and Geosciences Bureau. Bureau. Kasi yes, for sir. me, ang kilala lang po sa, ano, sa DNR is yung EMB tsaka yes, BMB, Environmental Management Bureau tsaka Biodiversity. Biodiversity Management Bureau. Hindi pa siya ganun kakilala yung GMB sa atin. Lalo na sa mga students na hindi uh, familiar sa structure ng DNR. And then lastly, yung sharing po ng ano. Importante yung budget at yung funding agency kasi hindi dapat nalilimit ang students doon sa resources na meron sila. So try nila mag-look ng, ng funding agency. For us, sir, no MS natin, swerte tayo kasi uh, scholar sir, tayo ng DOST. Tayo ng DOST. Yes. Yes, so And DOST funded ang thesis natin. Oo. Yes, so sir. pwede kayong mag-try na ganap ng ibang funding agency. Pwede kayong sumulat sa government agency nyo na katulad dun sa DA or sa LGU. 
baka pwede nilang i-fund yung studies natin. So, go out of the box. Hindi naman kailangan kayo mag-fund sa thesis nyo mismo. Pwede kayong maghanap sa ibang tao. Okay. Sige. Asan po ang ating mga katanungan? <laughs> ang dami na po nating nasabi. <laughs> Sige, pwede po kayong magtanong. Lalo na yung mga alam mo, yung mga tiga Tarlac State. Magtanong na kayo habang nandito pa si Sir Wesley. Or kahit ano, kasi malapit naman siyang ano, malapit nyo siyang i-type. Ay, itanong anytime. Pero tayo yung chance. Tayo yung chance. Sayo yung chance. Matanong nyo sa live. O sige, para po dun sa ano, yung mga nag-register kasi sa webinar, meron silang questions na iba. Uh, sa unang question, sir, what type of environmental issue bothers you the most? Ano, sir? Can you repeat, sir? Can you repeat? Anong type of uh, environmental issue bothers you the most? Kung isa lang, sir. Okay, so in the context of Tarlac province na lang siguro. So mm -hmm. I think um, ang isang issue pa rin, sir, na uh, magandang tignan or I'm bothered with is uh, the issue on uh, solid waste management, no? particularly in Tarlac province. Uh, because uh, even though may mga initiatives yung mga government uh, at the local government units, but I think the main reason why uh, solid waste management uh, issues are still occurring in, in, in our province because of the lack of discipline of households, uh, particularly in the proper segregation of waste. Kasi um, dito sa amin, uh, pinapatupad yung kapag hindi segregated yung basura, hindi siya kukolektahin. So para masod siguro, one of the uh, key uh, way or strategies in order to somehow uh, reduce no, the problem of solid waste management is really uh, discipline and uh, it's more on the initiative to segregate uh, our waste. No? So, siguro yun. Kasi pag dumadaan ako papunta ng uh, ESU, no? kasi I am riding a motorcycle, sir. nakikita ko na marami pa rin basura sa daan, marami pa rin basura na nakapalag sa mga uh, creeks, irrigations, etc. So, I think uh, if we want to address that, we need to start at, uh, at our household. No? We need to have the discipline and we have uh, to, to have the initiative to segregate our waste. Thank you, Sir Kendry. Okay, thank you, Sir Wesley. So, tiyatawagan po natin ang ano, TSC advice. So, <laughs> yes, mag-clean up drive po tayo regularly sa, ano, <laughs> sa ating area kasi maraming basura. Pero, Sir, nakakatawa lang kasi, I mean, for us, ah, yung kala natin yung solid waste management, mm -hmm. it's an environmental issue. Pero hindi lang siya doon nag-enter. Hindi lang siya Yes. Um, Nag-extend siya doon sa social component, napapasok doon sa letter R nyo, which is environmental, environmental education. So, yung alawak-lawak talaga, hindi tayo malilimit sa quali quanti qualitative. No, no. Quantitative. Kasi yung, yung may, may uh, measurement, may water quality meter. Pero pwede pa tayong lumabas din sa quali qualitative as long as kaya ng faculty na mag-handle ng mga sur social surveys, uh, FGDs, tsaka KIIs or key informant interviews. Yun na yung trend na yun eh, sa environmental science or kentik na hindi lang uh, purely physical but uh, one of the important uh, component or element of environmental research is the social component. Kasi mostly, di ba, yung mga problems naman natin sa environment nag-aaray uh, siya uh, because of the human sector or the human activity. So it is uh, very important to, when we do research, environmental research, uh, we should not forget about the social component of uh, that problem of, of that issue. Thank you, sir. Shout out po sa ano sa Sesam. Sana po proud kay Sam. <laughs> kasi, I mean, for those na hindi pa, I mean, hindi familiar sa Sesam, yung thesis kasi namin sa Sesam required na may social component. So, hindi kami nalilimit sa physical, sa economic. Laging may social, laging may plus one. So, so sa lumaba, ay bumaba na yun sa mga ano, universities natin across the Philippines na nagtuturo rin ang NY side. Kasi, Tama yung sinabi mo, sir. Lahat naman ng anthropocentric, anthropocentric naman talaga lahat ng ano natin ng environmental issues natin. So, ayun. Sige po. Ang second question po, meron pong uh, nagtanong sa Facebook group, ay Facebook Live, ano daw po yung focus ng air quality studies in Tarlac State? Uh, most, um, meron kaming, uh, may mga studies uh, on air quality dito sa Tarlac, pero uh, medyo matagal na siyang nakanda, like 2010 or uh, uh, sa period ng 2008, 2009, or 2010. Ang focus nila is more on the uh, key 
careful you things like uh, the socks, sulfur, uh, sulfur <laughs> oxide, uh, dioxide, uh, nitrogen, uh, nitrogen oxide, so and so. So ganun, uh, socks and nox yung uh, main focus ng uh, air ng um, studies on air pollution here in Interlock uh, province, particularly in cities, no, Interlock City. So, however, uh, kailangan na siguro ng mas uh, recent na study on air pollution kasi nga dumadami na rin yung mga industries, dumadami na rin yung mga sasakyan dito sa Interlock City. So, I think it's uh, a right time uh, for students or for faculty to conduct uh, recent air pollution studies here in Interlock City. Okay, thank you sir. So yun sa mga sa nagtanong po ng air quality, yung saktong-sakto, yung first episode ng Pantas is air quality yung thesis niya. So balikan niyo yung episode 1 si Dr. Lily. I'm not sure kung nag-abot siya sa Sesame sir, pero yes, sir. si Dr. Lily si, um, Abahero uh -oh. ay nag-focus sa air quality. Sure. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, ano. So ayun, um, may air quality Sesam. study si Dr. Lily. O kung gusto mag-partner ni TSU sa Sesame, collaborative is key. Yes, okay, pero sir, familiar ka po ba kung merong air quality monitoring si ano dyan, DNR? Ang, ang alam ko lang sir Kendrick is uh, water quality monitoring. We have here PENRO, in the uh, Provincial Environment and Natural Resources Office. So they can do uh, uh, periodic water, mon water quality monitoring on major rivers, streams, and creeks here in uh, Tarlac uh, province. But I'm not familiar with the air quality monitoring in Akanda. Tsaka medyo mahal kasi sir, di ba yung mm -hmm. ano? <laughs> well, kasi siguro hirap yung air quality hirap studies natin okay. sa Pilipinas. So doon po tayo sa may gamit sa, sa laboratory natin. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir, uh, uh, isa pa pong question is how to ensure, siguro last two or last two question na po kasi time check it's 5.15. Although late tayo nag-start, baka, yes, baka gabihin si sir sa school. <laughs> Masala okay, lang kayo. Sir, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yung isa po is Yung, di ba na-state po natin yung mga researches na trending ngayon? Pero trending, ginawa mong viral. Trending, okay. Pero how, the, how, would it, how can we ensure daw po na it will be understood by the public? Um, okay, uh, siguro yung mga researches uh, pwede natin itanda. Maybe uh, isang problem siguro na nakikita natin is uh, dahil hindi aware din yung mga tao about the environmental uh, issues na nang nangyayari. Like, for example, uh, meron palang deforestation sa Tarlac kasi ang alam lang nila is uh, majority flatlands yung, yung, yung Tarlac. Eh. So, walang forest. So, uh, a good way siguro to inform the public is through uh, yung mga awareness uh, seminars or yung mga IEC materials about the current environmental issues here in Tarla uh, will be a, a good uh, strategy or startup in order to uh, boost siguro yung awareness ng mga tao na kailangan ng ganitong mga studies because there is a problem. Kailangan ng ganitong mga researches kasi may mga uh, problems tayo in terms of environment. And once they will be informed uh, sa mga issues na to, I, I think uh, the chances of uh, for them to participate in uh, studies, no, yung mga researchers natin, will be greatly improved. Kasi alam nila na may issue. Alam nila na merong sinosolve na environmental concern yung isang research. So I think, yun nga, uh, IEC materials, uh, uh, boosting the awareness of uh, local residents in terms of the environmental issues that we are facing is a great way in order for people to accept uh, researches related to environment. Okay, so, begin po ulit natin ang second homework ang TSU. Galingan <laughs> yes, um, niyo po yung IEC. Ako, sir, sa PAES kasi ang ginagawa mm -hmm. talaga namin if, uh, for example, yung captions namin, nilolocalize mm -hmm. talaga namin para mas madaling makuha yes, ng community. Uh, so, sana po yung mga local orgs natin, mag-focus muna tayo sa local communities natin kasi baka mm -hmm. sila mismo hindi familiar dun sa environmental issues. Kaya uh -oh. importante, sir, yung map na pinakita mo kanina, hindi ko po alam mm -hmm. na may bundok sa Tarlac. Akala ko Ayun. tatlak. <laughs> so may slope na yun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think yun nga, um, kasi ang, ang Tarlac is a melting pot of different cultures. So may iba't iba ding language. No? So when we construct our IEC materials, we need to consider yung mga local dialects nila. 
na maintindihan nila. Like for example, pag pumunta tayo sa mga IT communities, as much as, as, much as possible, yung mga IEC materials natin are translated doon sa kanilang local dialect. And sa ganun, mas ma-engage sila kung may mga environmental uh, programs ba na ginagawa doon. Uh, language is a very important uh, aspect of communication. Alam niyo sa Mr. Kendrick yan. <laughs> yes, we and them come. Pero sir, sorry, yes, sir. just to, ano, to parang clarify, si Lucinda, saan mm-hmm. siya mas malapit? East, west, north, south? Doon sa border uh, ng mga pakanina. Nasa gitna. Uh, wait ba? lang. Sige, i- i-review ko na. So, <laughs> so nasa, ano siya, nasa ano siya, sir? Nasa sen- center part siya ng ah, Kailang, center part. Ah, mas mahirap kasi melting mm-hmm. pot. Kasi, mm-hmm. kuwari, di ba, sir, yung IEC natin, kung nasa south part tayo ng Tarlac, medyo pampanggen yun. Pampanggen yun. Yung mga kapampangan yun. Pag sa taas, medyo Ilocano na. Ilocano, oo. Dito kasi, oh, yun, so, maraming nagsasalita ng kapampangan, maraming din nagsasalita ng Ilocano. So, so pwede siguro pag gumawa tayo ng IEC materials, dalawang language, translated in kapampangan and translated also in Ilocano. So, yes, yun. very important ng language to consider. Uh, sir, ulit, sorry, time check, it's 5.20. Yes, uh, last three questions, kung okay lang po. Yes, sir. No problem. Pero medyo technical po yung isang question. Okay lang. Sige, sir. Sana maalala <laughs> ano po? Pa? <laughs> medyo pasok sa'yo to, sir, kasi bio ang, ang undergrad mo. Uh, what are the methods po in conducting biodiversity assessment and how is the air, how is this area in research relevant today? Kahit isa lang, sir, kasi maraming biodiversity oh, assessment. Um, usually, di ba, pag nagkakandak tayo ng mga biodiversity assessment, we use uh, transect line methods or yung mga quadrant Square. methods natin. <laughs> yung mga quadrat methods natin. But the most important uh, in, in biodiversity assessment is yung mga indices na gagamitin natin. Like, uh, we need to use Shannon Weiner indices. So, compute yung mga diversity... <laughs> EIA na to eh. Oo, oh, yung compute yung uh, uh, biodiversity indices doon sa lugar. And it is very important to conduct uh, such uh, researches, particularly here in Tarlac. Kasi wala pa talagang baseline studies on on this biodiversity assessment. Malay natin uh, when you conduct this uh, type of research, as maka invento ta, ay maka you know, maka um, discover tayo ng mga bagong species. No? Na there is a high possibility of that. Kasi nga hindi pa na yung forest resources ng uh, Tarlac province. Majority of the uh, forest resources ng province is hindi pa na Wala pang mga researches. So you are very much welcome here in Tarlac to conduct those type of studies. And even yung mga students natin, you know, uh, maybe uh, some of you can venture on this type of researches. Kung sa ganun, malaman talaga natin yung uh, lagay or yung composition ng forest resources natin. So yung nagtanong po, ay ano, mula pang panga, medyo malapit. Okay. Ay, malapit. Kaya mag, well, kaya mag, ano, kaya mag, mm-hmm. mag ano. Pero to add dun sa sagot ni Sir Wesley, uh, it's, ito yung isa sa nakita ko nung nag-envise ako. Yung biodiversity kasi ng Pilipinas, sobrang laki talaga. Sobrang mm-hmm. lawa. Either fauna or flora. Marine, uh, forest, fresh water. Sobrang lawa. Kaya yung chance na makapag-discover ka ng species na pwede mong ipangalan kahit kanino, kahit sa'yo. Ang mm-hmm. laki talaga. Kasi sa UPLB, sir, di ba? Mar- medyo maraming Marami. researchers na nakaka-discover ng bagong species. Merong crab, yes. merong spiders, merong orchids. Yeah. So frog, yun. Parang... Super dami sa biodiversity. So baka meron dun sa mga city, yun sa mga cave na pinakita ni Sir Wesley kanina. Baka makakuha kayo ng freshwater crab sa loob. So itry nyo. Okay. Uh, ang isang important tanong, uh, important tanong sir, is uh, mali natin uh, yung species pa nila na yun is vulnerable na or malapit na ma-extinct. Eh, hindi naman siya ng study. So nawala siya na hindi natin alam na meron pa lang ganun na cases so, yung mga biodiversity assessment studies are very vital no, in order to uh, protect and conserve our forests. Tapos yung mga water quality natin ngayon, lumipat na sa biodiversity. <laughs> Hindi mag say case na gusto niyo. <laughs> Pero importante kasi lahat talaga, lahat ng studies, kasi it would make yung holistic approach niya sa isang environmental issue. Pero, sir, yung last question natin for tonight. For tonight, for this afternoon. Sige, sir. I'm not sure kung paano po ito sasagutin, pero are there studies that focus in background radiation in the area? Uh, and again, sir, parang ngayon ko lang narinig yun, sir. Narinig ngayon ko lang narinig. For, are there studies that focus in background radiation in the area? Uh, 
Kung google ka muna yung background radiation. <laughs> Ang pag para mo mapasok sa akin sa isip ko din yung mga ano ba, mga towers, so, ganun, mga radiation. I, in, in, I I don't I'm not familiar with uh, that uh, with that area sir. Uh, Parang areas. heavy metal sir. Ah heavy metals. So hmm. meron namang mga studies na about heavy metals dito sa Tarlac province, but they are mostly uh, applied in water water, the water system or water resources. Uh, like ngayon, uh, meron kami mga students na inaaral yung um, yung uh, presence ng cadmium, uh, mercury, and lead sa fish ng, na makikita sa masalasak thing. So, parang siguro yun, yung, yung, yung example ng research na pwede, pwede pumasok doon if you are talking with heavy metal. So, may mga Okay, sir. Pero sir, i-ano lang natin kasi sabi ni Google, akala, nung una akala ko heavy metals. Heavy me- ano, It's ano, more sir. on ano, cosmic radiation, terrestrial radiation, inhalation, tsaka ingestion. So, hanap tayo ng ibang ano, <laughs> research. <laughs> wala, 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 wala pa naman dito. Wala, 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 wala pa tayo sa radiation yeah. level. Uh, sir. So, hopefully soon. Okay. No? Nagkagamit. <laughs> kasi, ano ba? Effect, meron po dito, average annual effective dose of free, ano, of natural resources. Sige, i-research namin yung ano, background radiation para sa inyo. Pero just to go with the program, thank you so much sir for answering yung questions ng mga students natin saka ng mga participants sa ating uh, Facebook. So balik lang po tayo sa slide saglit. So that is po yung talastasan natin which is basically is yung Q&A. And then uh, for the certificate of appreciation, uh, this is given Sir Wesley S. Gagarin, MSc, in recognition for his valuable contribution as resource speaker in PANTAS, environmental research in the local and global setup. Given this 28th day of January 2023 at the School of Environmental Science and Management, University of the Philippines, Los Paños, Laguna, Philippines. Signed by Kendrick Nico L. Faranilo, President and Founder of PAES. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Kendrick, for inviting me. Sana hindi ito yung huli. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hi, sir. Wag kang magaganyan. <laughs> Invite talaga kita. <laughs> so, yan. Thank you, maraming sir. maraming salamat, Sir Wesley. So, para lang po sa ating announcements uh, to student organizations. May nakita ko dito si USPP at si University of Mindanao. Mag-member na po kayo sa PAES. You can email us at uh, paes, ay, membership.paes at gmail.com or message us sa PAES National Facebook page. And the next session of Pantas is... Hindi, hindi siya Central Luzon eh. Parang Region 1. Hindi ko alam yung geography. Region 1 at yung... Yes, Pangasinan. Pangasinan yes, yung region next resource speaker one. natin, Region 1. Oh, that will be on February 25, uh, 2023 from 4 to 5 p.m. So sana po umatin po ulit kayo sa ating second session. second session Pero episode 10 na siya in reality. And to emphasize lang po kung gano'ng kalawak yung opportunity or PAES and environmental science students. Hindi po tayo nag-iisa, hindi lang po Lucinda Campus na TSU ang may envisay. Marami pong envisay across the Philippines. And yun po ang goal ng PAES, which is to mainstream our degree program as of important. Priority nga siya ng, ng DOST. So malaking bagay po, lalo na yung mga tiga-tarlac. Hanggang andyan si Sir Wesley, mag-enroll na kayo na envisay. <laughs> yes, sir. Open naman ng TSU. Yes, admission. Ano pa ay kaso of second sem, sir, no? Next June na ulit ang pasukan. Mm. Ang pasukan, sir, niyan, August na ulit. Dito sa August TSU. na ulit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so August admissions, abangan ng mga tiga-tarla. So to end, uh, ito yung lagi nating quote na nilalagay. Kasi if you have watched yung Don't Look Up na movie, sana makinig po tayo sa qualified scientists. Kasi yung mga environmental issues natin and environmental problems. Yung mga scientists yung isa, yung main resource person na dapat nating pagtanungan kasi mas evidence-based and backed up by data yung mga suggestions sa mga yung solutions na ibibigay nila or namin. <laughs> so daghang salamat sa Tanan and Amping Kanunay. So para po sa mga nasa Zoom, magstay lang po tayo saglit. Uh, I-end ko lang po yung Facebook Live para sa ating photo session. So sa mga nanonood po sa Facebook Live, maraming salamat po sa pagtutok for the episode 1 ng Pantas for this 2023. And sana po umattend kayo sa February 25, 2022. So maraming salamat po sa mga nasa Facebook Live. Uh, I-end na po namin ang streaming. Stay lang po tayo sa Zoom. 
po sa Facebook. <laughs> And live ganyan.